Welcome to video 7 of module 3, Box Plots. In this video, we'll begin with a brief review of finding a five-number summary, as well as using the IQR method to identify outliers. Then, we'll slow down a little bit and talk about how to create a box plot. So let's get started. A useful way to visualize data is by using a five-number summary and the IQR to create a box plot. In order to make a box plot, we have to follow these six steps. You'll notice that the first five steps are review of things we've done before, making sure data values are in order, creating a five-number summary, finding an IQR and determining the outlier boundaries, and then identifying the outliers. Step six merely says to draw the box plot. So when we get there, we'll make sure we cut that into a few smaller steps to make sure we know how to draw it. So let's get started with an example. In 2007, Vlogbrothers Hank and John Green started a YouTube project called Brotherhood 2.0 in order to reconnect as adult brothers living in separate states. The lengths of their first 50 videos in minutes are given in the table below. We're going to create a box plot of these values. In order to do that, I need to give myself a little bit of space. So through the magic of technology, Da -da 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 -da. Hooray! So, because the first steps to finding a box plot involve finding a five-number summary, getting the IQR, and using the IQR method to figure out outliers, I recommend that you pause this video and practice those ideas here. When you're done, you can resume the video and we'll go through it. I'm not going to go through those steps in great detail, you can watch video 3.6 if you want to see an example of finding the five number summary, IQR, and outliers using the IQR method. So pause the video here and complete those steps. And then when you're ready, you can unpause and we'll work through the steps together. All right, did you find your five number summary? Let's see how you did. The first step is actually to make sure our data values are in order. And fortunately for us, they are. So if I look down the first column, it begins at 1.50 and then goes to 1.75, 2.05, 2.23, 2.35, and then the next column picks up and continues in order, all the way over till the end. So fortunately, we don't have to reorder these values in order to find our five number summary. Phew! So let's find the five number summary. Remember that the minimum and the maximum are the easiest ones to find, so we find those first. The minimum was 1.50 minutes, that's our first number, and the last number in our data set is 4.92, so that's our maximum. To get the median, we're going to have to find the number or numbers in the middle of the data set. So, because the values are in order of the columns, I'm going to follow the columns until I get to the center. Now, in this case, the value that's in the middle is 3.10 in both numbers. So, if I add 3.10 to 3.10 and then divide by 2, I'm going to get 3.10. So, the median of this data set is 3.10 minutes. Now, I'm using this vertical line here to separate the lower half from the upper, upper half of my data set. I'm doing this because we need to find Q1 and Q3. In order to find Q1, we need to determine the median of the lower half of the data set. So I'm going to follow the same process for finding the median. I'm just going to start on the left edge and uh, before the pink bar. So I follow the order till I get to the middle and 2.75 is here in the middle. So that's going to be my first quartile, the Q1. Then we repeat the process to the right of the pink bar to find Q3. So finding the median of the upper half of data, I get that Q3 is going to be 3.50 minutes. So there we go, that is our five number summary. How did you do? Now that we have the five number summary, we can use it to find the IQR. Remember that IQR stands for interquartile range, 
and the IQR is found by subtracting the first quartile from the third. So I do Q3 minus Q1, or 3.50 minus 2.75, and that gave me 0.75 minutes. Next, we're going to use the IQR to determine the lower and upper boundaries for outliers. To find the lower boundary, we have to subtract 1.5 times the IQR from the first quartile. So Q1 minus 1.5 times the IQR is going to be 2.75 minutes minus 1.5 times 0.75 minutes, and that's going to give us 1.625 minutes. This means that any value in our data set that is smaller than 1.625 minutes is going to be an outlier. In this case, that means our minimum, our one and a half minutes, is in fact an outlier in our data set. To find an upper boundary, this time we're going to add one and a half times the IQR to the third quartile. So Q3 plus 1.5 times the IQR is going to be 3.50 plus 1.5 times 0.75, and that gives us an upper boundary of 4.625 minutes. In other words, any number that is greater than 4.625 is going to be an outlier. In this case, our maximum is also an outlier because 4.92 is larger than 4.625. So this data set has two outliers, one on the small end and one on the large end. So that sort of is a review of the first five steps. Before we move on to create our box plot, there's actually another piece of information we need to gather. In order to create the box plot, if you have outliers, you need to know what are the other extreme values that are not outliers. In other words, what is the smallest number in the data set that is not an outlier? And what is the largest number in the data set that is not an outlier? In this case, that means the 1.75 because that is the smallest number that's not an outlier, as well as the 4.32, because that's the largest number that is not an outlier. Now that we've collected all of this information, let's summarize it and give ourselves some space to graph the box plot. All right, so here's a summary of the information we just found. We have our five number summary, our minimum Q1, median Q3, and maximum. And then we also found that we had two outliers, one at one and a half and the other at 4.92. And I also need to know what my minimum and maximum non-outlier values were. Now, if I don't have outliers in my data set, then the minimum and maximum non-outliers will be the same as the minimum and the maximum in my five number summary. So I don't have to explicitly state them. But because we had outliers in this data set, I do need to make sure that I write those down. For our graphing space, all you really need is a horizontal axis, but I like to give myself a little bit of grid space as well to help me make sure all of my lines are, you know, nice and straight and as neat as possible. All right, so here's how we're gonna create our box plot. The first step to do is something I almost always forget to do, which is why I like to do it first, and that's to give my graph a title. Uh, the data set that we were working with listed the length of the videos that the Vlogbrothers made, their first 50 videos. So I'm gonna title this, Length of First 50 Vlogbrother Videos. Next, I'm going to determine the spacing of the numbers on my horizontal axis. To do that, I'm going to look at my five number summary, in particular the minimum and the maximum. So the minimum was 1.50 minutes and the maximum was 4.92, which means I want to make sure that my horizontal axis goes from probably around 1 to 5. That will stay pretty nice with all of my data and uh, make sure that I fill up the majority of my grid space. I found that if I counted every fifth line, uh, as a unit, then I would be able to fill this graph space up nicely. So that's what I did. My first line is one, and then I went uh, five spaces over to get two, five spaces over to get three, and so on. 
Now, because we're working with decimals, if you're not very comfortable working with decimals, I recommend that you label those little intervals on your horizontal axis as well. In this case, because we divided each unit up into five spaces, we are going to be labeling by fifths. So one fifth is the same as 0.20. So in terms of decimals, we're counting by 0.20s. So for example, our first unit here would be split up into 1.20, 1.40, 1.60, 1 1.80, and then 2. If instead of, say, 5 spaces, we had counted by, I don't know, 8 spaces, then we would be counting by eighths instead of by fifths. I'm going to get rid of those point 20s here just because it's going to clutter up my screen and I don't have a lot of space. But if you want to include them or you could even count by, you know, point 40s or whatever is going to make it easier for you to remember what your decimal values are, uh, feel free to do that. Do what is going to help you. And the last part of sort of setting up our graphing space is to label the horizontal axis. In this case, our values are time and it's measured in minutes. So you want to make sure, especially um, because we have length of videos up in the title, you really want to make sure that you have the units that you're measuring in in your horizontal axis title. So in this case, I really need to make sure that I'm writing the word minutes there. All right, perfect. So now that our graphing space is all set up, we can actually get down and graph the box plot. When I graph a box plot, there's really like three sections to it. The first section that I like to start with is my box portion. And the box portion is made up of the first and third quartiles, as well as the median. In order to graph the box section, we're going to go to each of those three values and draw a vertical line, and then we're gonna connect them so they look like boxes. Here's what I mean. Let's start with Q1, it's 2.75 minutes. So I'm gonna go over to 2.75, it's just before 2.80, and I'm going to draw a vertical line there. So this pink line is representing my first quartile of 2.75. Then I'm gonna to go to 3.10, which is halfway between 3 and 3.20, and I'm gonna draw a vertical line there as well. Lastly, I'm gonna go over to 3.5, which is halfway between 3 and 4, and draw a vertical line for Q3. To complete the box portion, I'm going to connect across the top and across the bottom. Because we're making this box, notice how it's kind of hovering over that uh, axis, so it's not touching the axis, but it's kind of hovering above it. So that's where we're going to place our box for our box plot. The second section of a box plot is to graph the outliers. Outliers on a box plot are going to be graphed with X. Sometimes you'll have a couple of outliers, like here we have two. Sometimes you might ha not have any outliers at all. And sometimes you might have only one or more than two. So you really you can get kind of anything happening here. In order to graph our outliers, I'm going to go over to one and a half and plot an X. So that's our lower outlier. I'm going to do the same thing for the upper outlier of 4.92. So that's almost at five where I'm going to plot that X. So that's the second section of the box plot, is graphing the outliers using X's. The third section of creating a box plot is to graph a minimum and a maximum and kind of connect them in what are sometimes referred to as whiskers. So sometimes a box plot is called a box and whisker plot because the minimum and the maximum end up looking like little cat whiskers off the side. Now, because both of our minimum and our maximum values were outliers, this is where we need to use the minimum non-outlier and the maximum non-outlier for our box plot. Our minimum non-outlier value was 1.75. So I'm going to go over to 1.75 and draw a vertical line, but this time it's a little bit shorter than the lines we used for the box portion. So this little purple line is graphed at about 1.75. I'm going to do the same thing for the maximum non-outlier. So our maximum outlier value was 4.32. So I'm going to draw a vertical line at about 4.32.
Then I connect these two pieces with a horizontal line to the box. So see how they kind of look like cat whiskers out the side? So that's why they're referred to as whiskers. Notice that the outliers are disconnected from the box portion of the graph, while the non-outliers are all connected together. This is deliberate to kind of show how far away from the rest of the data those outliers really are. So we can see that the lower outlier actually isn't super far away from the next lowest value of 1.75, whereas the maximum out uh, value, the 4.92, is kind of far away from the second highest value in the data set, the 4.32. I also wanted to mention that if you don't have outliers, then instead of the x, you would just use the maximum or the minimum value as the maximum or minimum non-outlier and connect it. So it's possible that you uh, won't have any x's or you'll be using the actual min or max as part of the whiskers. It really just depends on what your data values are and whether or not you have outliers. This concludes our video for box plots and in fact the video for module 3. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in module 4.